All right, this is going to be yet another video that's a response to a comment because the comment brings up uh, some really good points uh, or points that are worth addressing, again, related to gun control. Uh, so the comment on my previous video, which was about comparing U.S. and U.K. gun control, uh, says, uh, I don't disagree with you, but just saying that you don't like the comparing statistics when the result doesn't support your argument. Um, okay, well, first of all, that's... That's not all I said. I just didn't say I don't like the comparison. I said that's a, a logical fallacy to uh, assume correlation equals causation. And also, you have to establish correlation to even make that argument. And there isn't because low homicide rates predate the restrictions in whatever country you want to name, whether it's the UK or Australia. And it also doesn't really explain why crime is going down in the United States when there were no gun control laws. So I think that's a, you know, it's not only a simplification, that's a misrepresentation of my argument there. I just don't say I don't like it. I guess you could say that, but I give reasons why I don't like it and why it's invalid. So, you know, there's that. But, you know, I don't really want to dwell on that too much. But the second part of this that I thought was actually interesting. You still haven't explained why it's a great idea to give an 18-year-old a semi-automatic weapon. You know, so there's, there's, there's a good argument there. So there's a there's a general principle there, and then there's a more specific one related to, to teens. So in general, this comes to the, you got to demonstrate that you need something before you buy it. No, you don't. All right, the burden of proof isn't on me to explain why somebody should have the right to do something. If you want to prohibit somebody from freely associating and freely engaging in the market and spending their money how they want and owning whatever property they want, the burden of proof falls on you. Uh to show why they shouldn't or why they can't, All right? And unfortunately, uh, one or two anecdotal examples of, of, a, of a school shooter really isn't a very strong argument. We could just as easily say that nobody should be allowed to own airplanes because airplanes are used in terrorist attacks sometimes, and they are, and when they are, it's way worse than any school shooting, right? Uh, well, at least potentially, you know, I don't even need to, to go into more detail on that, right? So this is a real common thing a lot of leftists, a lot of socialists kind of look at the world and they 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 project their values and their needs onto everybody else and say, look, society would be a lot simpler if all the things I don't like or I don't need were just eliminated and those resources uh, devoted to things that I do agree with, right? So, you know, some some somebody might uh, think that um, rock is dumb and, and gyms are stupid, but they might really like opera and therefore think, well, we should cancel all those other things, but then we should subsidize opera, right? Because they like opera. Um, or uh, they might say that um, gyms are great and that we should put all of our money into gyms, but we shouldn't put any money into the arts because I don't like the arts or whatever. Uh, so, you know, everyone's different. Everyone has different values. Everyone has different priorities. Everyone has different needs. Uh, there's some overlap with needs, but it's not perfect. And actually, when you talk about quote unquote needs, it, it actually gets a little tricky because a lot of times they are derived from people's values and those, again, are not the same. And they're not even physiologically the same. There are people who have different needs, right? People need different types of food, different caloric intakes, different types of exercise regimens, right? If you're a pregnant woman, you're just in a different position than if you're a teenage boy, for instance, or uh, a geriatric, somebody who's really old, All right? So... Uh, the burden of proof is not on somebody else to prove why they should be allowed to have something. If you're gonna, if you're going to prevent somebody, if you're gonna say that you, they can't, the burden falls on you, right? It, this isn't, this isn't court of law. This, this is is actually worse than a court of law. Like you, you can't just uh, say, look, you've got to prove that you're innocent. No, you've got to prove that I'm guilty, right? So if you want to prohibit people from having guns or teens from having guns, then. Uh, then the burden falls on you, not on me. Uh, now there's, and that that's a general. That's not, I mean, people will make that same argument not just about teens. They'd make that argument about everyone. They'd say, well, I don't think you need, I mean, many gun control people say, I don't think you need a gun. I don't think you need an AR-15. I don't think you need a handgun. Um, and no number of examples of people using those firearms in self-defense is going to satisfy them. All right, you can say, here's, Here's an anecdote. Here's an here, here's a video of look. We, I mean, very famous. We have a video of a teenager using an AR-15 in self-defense to kill a pedophile, and somebody else who's grossly assaulting him. And that person's name is Kyle Rittenhouse. Kyle Rittenhouse, who went to defend property and prevented a car dealership from getting burned to the ground. And when he was attacked by a bunch of thugs, he shot three of them, and two of them died. So he was 17 when that happened. 
Uh, and that's a dramatic, extremely well-documented uh, case that you know went to trial. I watched the entire trial, and lo and behold, he was found not guilty on every count uh, because it was clearly self-defense. So yes, there's one example. Now, people will say, rightly, that, well, that's just one anecdote. Sure, but the entire debate on gun control is driven by anecdotes, right? Uvalde is an anecdote. Parkland's an anecdote. Uh, 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 Newtown is, 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 is an anecdote. Columbine's an anecdote. Let's go look at all those anecdotes. Yeah, I just telescoped 20 years, you know, we've get, and we've got four. Now, there's more than that, I know, but those are the ones people know about. Uh, and they're anecdotes, right? They're just a couple of them. Statistically, they don't even show up in the numbers. Not in terms of the number of deaths, not in terms of the number of kids involved in school, not in terms of the number of, of uh, violent uses of firearms. I mean, firearms, I mean, most violent uses of firearms aren't actually homicides, right? The people are, are robbed or are stuck up or wounded, but they don't necessarily die. It doesn't necessarily result in a homicide most of the time. Uh, so it's, it's interesting how the pro-gun control anecdotes are just are the most valid things that have to derive all drive all policy. But then the examples of people using guns in self-defense, I mean, there's other examples. There's an example, a guy named Stephen Williford uh, stopped a mass shooting with an AR-15. He wasn't a teen, obviously, but, uh, you know, obviously a hero. And he just gets memory hold. No one taught, like he, uh, there was a mass shooting. The shooter had plans, direct plans to go do another mass shooting someplace else. He got in his car. Williford intervened and killed the guy. And do you know his name? Have you ever heard of him? Is he on CNN and MSNBC all the time to tell a story? Do they care? No. They would rather talk to David Hogg, who did absolutely nothing except jump in front of a camera and try and get as famous as possible. But because he was on brand and had the right message, he gets trumpeted left and right, where this actual hero who actually saved lives, like Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh, I don't know if Kyle Rittenhouse saved lives or not. He saved them other than his own, but that's good enough. Uh, so... Uh, no, the burden of proof falls on you. You want to say that I can't own a gun. The vast majority of people who own guns do so safely. So you're going to need better than a few anecdotes. But then there's a more interesting point of like a teenager, you know, um, you know, you still haven't explained why it's a great idea to give us 18 year old a semi-automatic weapon. Well, first of all, Mike Cobb, the guy who made the comment, uh, you need to explain that to the U.S. military because they give 18 year old semi-automatic rifles a couple thousand times what, a day, a week. Uh, most of the people who join the army, for instance, or the air force or the Navy are right out of high school. There are some older people, but most of them are teenagers. A lot of them are 18. Some of them are 19. And in the, if you're talking about the Marine Corps, some of them are 17. The Marine Corps allows you to join when you're 17. You go to basic when you're 17, you get given an issued a weapon, usually an AR-15 or an M1A or some other semi-automatic rifle. And then you can be deployed in combat. And I've actually met uh, a couple last year. I went to, you know, I was traveling on the flight and I ended up in a flight full of people who were joining the Marine Corps. They'd gotten their paperwork and they were all flying off to basic training. And one or two of them were in their 20s, but most of them were teens. And the one that I sat next to in the plane was 17. And he was a new 17, which meant he was going to complete basic training, which he now certainly has. And he's been deployed as a 17 year old with a semi automatic weapon. So. I'm not the one, I mean, I don't advocate that we give guns, that, but if people want to own them, they can. But it's the military that's actually doing that. They're giving 17-year-olds and a lot, and 17-year-olds is just the Marine Corps, and there's probably not all that many, hundreds or thousands, I'm not sure. But if you're talking 18-year-olds, well, then it's many, many, many more because the Army's taking in, you know, many thousands of 18-year-olds every year, many thousands. I don't know exactly how many, but a lot. Right, and they're issuing all of them weapons, uh, at least at one point in their training, if not long term. So, you know, you need to ask that of them. But the further question is, teenagers, I mean, do teenagers have rights or not? And if they do, they have every other, they, they have every reason that, uh, you know, someone who's not 18, a 20 or 30 year old could have to use a gun. Okay, so like a, a teenager could hunt. They do hunt, and you can hunt with semi-automatic weapons, uh, and there's actually a lot of that that happens. There's a lot of people, even 12, 13, 14, young teens who hunt with guns, uh, and in many cases with semi-automatic weapons. Sometimes they just hunt with shotguns, sometimes they hunt with bows and arrows, and sometimes they hunt with semi-automatic weapons or practice with them, and they can practice with them too, right? What's the problem with that? And the other thing is they have a right to self-defense. Are you saying that a, a teenager 
does not have the right to defend themselves, that they are a, um, an obligatory victim. No, they do, and they have used them. And I've heard other stories before, and I didn't go look, but look, there's one very famous one that's just from a year ago, and that's the Kyle Rittenhouse story. He was 17. He bought the gun legally from his friend. His friend bought it legally. He was allowed to own that gun. He was allowed to possess that gun, uh, and he uh, used it in self-defense. He got attacked by a pedophile first initially, and then when he killed the pedophile, a mob of leftists attacked him, and he shot two more of them, one of whom pulled a gun on him, right? You know, he got a gun pulled on him and he shot the, blew the guy's arm off, probably by dumb luck. Uh, it looks like he's got great aim. He admits that he was just kind of like, he just pulled the trigger and it happened. But uh, are you saying that Kyle Rittenhouse was wrong? He shouldn't have had that gun. Uh, and, you know, it's wrong to, you know, what he was doing. People t talk about what he was doing that night. He was protecting a business from getting looted and destroyed by a, a mob of leftists. Now, you could say maybe I wouldn't do that. Uh, you know, this goes back to the burden of proof. I wouldn't do that, so you shouldn't be allowed to do that. No, I don't think that there's anything wrong with somebody who wants to defend property, even somebody else's property. They were asked. They didn't invite them. It wasn't like that they were invited themselves. This was gone over in great detail in the trial. There's absolutely no question that they were asked to, to do that by the Kandiri brothers, the owners of those car businesses. They had three lots. Two of them had already been destroyed. They didn't want the last one to be destroyed. So they put the word out and they got people to show up, including Kyle Rittenhouse and his friend, um, Jonathan Black. Uh, Dominic Black, sorry, Dominic Black. Um, and uh, I mean, what what is the argument that you should not like? Then an adult, should, uh, there are adults who did that. Some of them testified in the trial. You're saying that they should not be allowed to do that. That uh, if you have a business, it should be you should allow it to be looted. So the, you know the famous rooftop Koreans, that the rooftop Koreans are all wrong. They're horrible bigots, and they should have allowed their businesses that they've worked, spent you know whatever decades, maybe their entire lives to build this, their source of livelihood, their source of pride, their purpose in the world. They should let it be burned down because a mob is just looting and crazy and there's nothing that they actually did and if you think the answer to that is no why is it distinct if you say well what if they're 17 what if they're 16 so what what is it does that mean they don't have rights that they can't use a gun in self-defense obviously they can it happens it's rare i mean look people people using guns in self-defense is pretty common but i don't know what percentage of them are are teenagers or younger and i don't know what percentage of those teenagers who act in self-defense are using semi-automatic uh did you say rifles if they if you include semi-automatic handguns it's a bigger group um semi semi-automatic weapon okay so semi-automatic weapon is more common because you're going to talk about every other than revolvers all the handguns are semi-automatic weapons so in that case it's relatively more common but still you're looking at a subset of a subset of a subset uh but if you're talking about teenagers using semi-automatic weapons in, in mass shootings, you're also talking about a subset of a subset of a subset. Um, now, if you're actually not just talking about mass shootings, it's a little bit worse because there's a lot of teenagers, there's a lot of, say, gang members who commit homicides, and very often it is going to be with a semi-automatic weapon because they're going to use a handgun. right? I think when you say semi-automatic weapon, it's the implication is, is a rifle uh, because they're what drive the you know the, the argument but most of the semi-automatic uh homicides in this country are done with handguns and so yeah there probably are actually a lot of teens sp specifically gang members who commit homicide with you know unless they're using a shotgun or a bolt action rifle they're going to use a semi-automatic probably a handgun maybe an assault rifle but those are very very rare and please no one please comment about my use of the term assault rifle you know what i mean rifle rifle so the question is, do, do teenagers have rights? Do they have, uh, is there something about them in particular? And you don't even say teenagers in general. You say an 18-year-old. Again, Army gives semi-automatics to 18-year-olds, you know, thousands of times every year, if not more. Um, but yeah, they can vote. They can join the Army. Uh, they should be allowed to own a gun. And yeah, they should be allowed to drink, too. Those laws are pretty, pretty asinine, those restrictions, are, even though I'm coming from somebody who does not drink and advises people not to it's their body their choice if they want to get drunk they should be allowed to get drunk um and so you know there's a the meta issue here is do do they have rights and if so how many and when does when does that manifest uh and you know i'm satisfied that it's not when they're 18 it's not when they're 17 it's not when they're 16 it's probably more like when they're 14 or 15 now there's a gradation 
everyone's a little different. There are people who are never mature enough to have rights, even when they're 35 or 25. Uh, there are people that uh, are going to mature very quickly, and it's possible, in fact, likely that a some some percentage of a and and also that a given person is not going to go from completely childlike, no no zero maturity at all, physically completely a child, mentally completely a child, and they're going to blow out the candles, you know, one day when they're 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 and when the when the smoke rises from their their birthday cake they're now physically an adult and mentally an adult it does not work that way and uh it's kind of silly maybe it's the least evil or the most workable or the only workable solution but it's kind of silly that our laws presume that or, or reflect that now i i i doubt that there's anyone out there who who believes that but the laws, the way the laws are structured is basically like that, where you are a complete child, you're a complete minor, you can't consent to sex, you can't consent to a contract, you have to go to school, you have, you know, your wards of your parents or of the state, you have, you can't sign contracts, you can't agree to work certain jobs unless the state says that you can. Um, you know, there are exceptions and there are people who are, there are teens who do do some work because it is permitted by the state, but they could just as easily unpermit it. Uh, and then at some point, magically, they have rights, you know, and you, you'll see this sometimes with kids who turn 18 in call in, in school and they suddenly realize, oh, like the, the they can't, there's no truancy laws that apply to me now. I don't have to go if I don't really want to now. Usually you're a junior or a senior at that point and it's like you might as well finish. So it doesn't really manifest. But the reality is, unfortunately, a little bit more complex. You're a child, you slowly develop as a child. At some point, you start to go through puberty uh, a little bit earlier for a girl, a little bit later for a boy. It varies from person to person. It's changed over time. But at some point, you start to go through puberty as you do. You rapidly uh, begin to change physically and mentally. And your capacity to make decisions, uh, mature decisions, informed decisions, goes up. Now, it's different stages for different people. And there's, I mean, I think it's, it's it's also clear that there are just certain decisions that have lower thresholds than others. Uh, so you wouldn't want somebody who is 18 to be president, let's say, because, the, you know, massive, massive uh, impact on, you know, the whole world for your decisions. So you want someone who's got experience probably. But can you agree to working a job after 11 p.m., you know? And even speaking to somebody who sees the value in getting eight hours of sleep, especially for a teenager, um, I don't know that you need to be 18 to do that. I think that you could probably do that when you're younger than 18. Um, can you drink? I don't think anyone should drink. Drinking has negative uh, effects on your brain, has negative effects on your sleeping for anyone, and especially for teens. But, you know, are they going to choose to do it? They're, they are. They choose to do it anyway, as it is. Can they consent to? Can they understand sex? Uh, at some point, yeah. Now I think they're gonna under they're gonna have the ability to consent to a kiss and a hug and a date before they're gonna have uh, the ability to consent to uh, having sex and having a kid. But look, physiologically speaking, uh, evolutionarily speaking, it wouldn't make sense for us to have the physical ability to rear children, but the mental inability to handle it. Uh, so uh, you know the and and historically teens have had more autonomy and did marry younger at different stages. It, it, history has not been all the same, but there's many times when that's the case. Children can join the military. Lots, lots of stories in history and even not so, not so distant history of, of young teens. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, the great book About Face by Colonel David Hackworth. Great book on the Vietnam and Korean War by just a hardcore American soldier who lied to join the Merchant Marine when he was 14, and then using that as a proxy, got into the Army when he was 15. You know, got into the Army when he was 15 and got deployed to Europe like less than a year after World War II ended. Now, he didn't see combat until he was a little bit older, until uh, the, the Korean War, at which point he was, I think, in his, like, maybe 20. But, you know, that that's something that happened even in the United States, you know, in living memory. Um, and maybe more times that, you know, obviously I haven't seen every example of it. So uh, there's some real hard questions here. But if as soon as you start to say, if you if you look at the metrics, can they make decisions? Uh, do they understand their actions? 
then uh, uh, then it's very hard to argue that they shouldn't be allowed to have a gun. And for all the reasons that anyone else can have a gun, to go hunting, to do target shooting, to invest because they like it, um, or for self-defense. And they use them for self-defense sometimes, not frequently, uh, not that subset anyway. The overall number of defensive gun uses is quite high. Most of them don't result in a death, right? There, there's a bit of a bait and switch that happens. It's one of the, what's one of the um, slicker... Uh, misrepresentations that the gun control advocates do. One of them is to use the word gun deaths. You know, they'll say, oh, Parkland this, Uvalde that, gun deaths. You know, there's, and then they'll put up the 30,000 gun deaths. And so, you know, you mentioned two school school, two or three school shootings, and then you mentioned the number of gun deaths, and people in their minds think, oh, you mean, when you say 30,000 gun deaths, you mean um, 30,000 uh, elementary school children are gunned down, you know, as their teachers throw their bodies over them. Um, no, no. Uh, most gun deaths are suicide, at least two thirds, uh, and uh, some of them are accidents, which are tragic. But you know, people who use things are killed by those things. People who like to drive motorcycles often die in motorcycle accidents. Would we ban motorcycles because the people who use them die from them? Sometimes people who speedboat a lot or jet ski a lot, there'll be in accidents with those things, and sometimes they'll get maimed, and sometimes they'll get killed, and so. The people who are getting killed by these uh, gun accidents, the overwhelming majority are gun owners, gun users, and they would not want them to be banned because they made a mistake or there was some kind of malfunction. Uh, and those numbers aren't huge, but they are a contingent of, of the total. Uh, and then you have a lot of homicides, and the vast majority of the homicides are not school children. Uh, they're one-on-one -on -one gang violence, mostly in inner cities, uh, and a couple inner cities in particular. I, I don't remember. I don't remember the exact numbers and these have these do shift over the years but it was something like half of all the homicides happened in just five cities uh, of the 4,000 counties in the United States there's something like half of them have no homicides and most of the rest have like one or less every year um, and it's just a couple you know like 20 or 30 counties that account for the vast majority of the violence and those 20 or 30 counties are not, you know, typically, they typically have the most gun restrictions and the least per capita gun ownership rates, All right? So it just doesn't, just, again, the correlation just doesn't really stick at all. It's not really there. Um, but one of the other uh, fallacies is to uh, talk about you're more likely to uh, kill yourself or kill a family member than to kill an intruder. Uh that study is based, it's based on uh, the Kellerman study, and there are a lot of problems with that study. Uh, it's, a, it's an old study. But the biggest problem is that uh, self-defense of gun uses go way beyond killing your aggressor, right? So uh, according to that study and according to the argument, if you are, to, say you wake up in the middle of the night, your door is getting broken into, you know, and, and three guys run in with guns, and you pull out a shotgun, and you fire in the air, and they all run away, that would not be counted as a self-defense, right? You didn't kill anyone. You didn't even hurt anyone. You clearly used a gun in self-defense, but they would then not count that as a self-defense as gun use because you didn't kill anyone. If you shot one of them and they didn't die, they wouldn't count that either, right? So wounding the opponent, firing and scaring them away, and most, most uh, common of all, brandishing are far, 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 far more common. Or Each one of those is orders of magnitudes more common than killing the assailant. And so it's very misleading to say, well, you're more likely to, you know, kill a family member than to kill, t t to kill, sure, to kill, but a self-defense, you don't have to kill. Like Gross, uh, uh, Gross, uh, Gage Grosskreutz is not dead, right? He pulled a gun on Kyle Rittenhouse, and Kyle Rittenhouse blew his arm off, and that prevented him from killing Kyle, which he admitted the next day on Facebook that he was going to kill him. He was going to empty his entire clip into Kyle's face, and he didn't do it because his arm got blown off, but he didn't die. And so uh, the the Kellerman study would say that's not a self-defense of gun use, right? Well, that's extremely misleading. Now, it's still that Kyle still got two defensive gun uses that day. I mean, and there was a, a, a others that he used and it, you know, he didn't shoot, you know, jump kick man uh, he shot at after he got kicked in the face and luckiest man in the world. He got missed by inches from a, a, a round going straight through his head, but I mean, he's kicking a teenager in the face as part of a mob, so he kind of deserved it. Um, so, uh, the 
the numbers of times that these get used effectively without there being a fatality uh, is so many so many times higher. The estimates on this, you know, the most famous slash infamous researcher of this is Gary Kleck. Um, but even the CDC has done similar studies. They hi- they hi- they hid them. Uh, there's a great article. I'll link to it if I can find it. That Brian Doherty wrote at Reason. How back in the 90s, the CDC basically did their own research and came up with numbers that were larger than Kleck. Kleck was saying like two to three million defensive gun uses a year in the United States. It would be probably lower now because the crime rate is rate is lower. The numbers were interesting because they were very analogous to the total number of gun crimes. Uh, not just homicides, but you know all violent uses of guns, uh, holdups and whatnot. The, the number of defensive gun uses was very similar to that, like the same, which makes sense. Uh, and uh, the CDC covered up their findings, and they weren't discovered until 10 years later. There's a really good article on it. But uh, it's not just CLEC. I think there's there's something like a dozen studies that have looked into this and all kind of narrowed in on on similar numbers. And those numbers are something like two or three million defensive gun uses. And if you want to just be uh, really conservative, we can just say a million and call it good. Um, and that's a lot. And I don't see any problem with a teenager doing that. And they do. You know, Kyle Rittenhouse, famous, well-documented example, but there are others. Um, and yes, anecdotal. But hey, if we're going to drive the whole debate by one crazy person with a gun in Texas, uh, oh, uh, then, you know, why... You know, it's it just you're being very selective in your anecdotes then. Um, so, you know, I've and I've look, I've gone to Porkfest. There's teenagers with guns at Porkfest. You see 14 year old. I remember one, he had 14 year old walking around with AR-15. He didn't kill anybody. Right. Didn't cause a problem. And, and there's other things, too, like just because you have a gun at a certain age doesn't mean you're going to use it at that age. But the earlier you start to use it, the more proficient you will, the more time you have to train. Right, so it, Kyle Rittenhouse didn't have a lot of time on his on his rifle, but if he had started using it when he was 15, by the time he was 17, he may have been even more effective, and you know, Jump Kick Man would be dead, Gage Grosskiss would be dead, or Kyle would have been wise enough to not put himself in that situation. Who knows, right? Or confident enough that he wasn't picked on. It does look like he was picked on because he was young. The first guy that attacked him was, you know, a pedophile and super aggressive, and also had a death wish, uh, uh, quite literally, but. Uh, if he had had a couple more years to train because he had an AR-15 when he was 14 or 15, which, you know, they can get them from their parents, right? Uh, then I don't see how that would have made the situation worse. It probably would have made it better in every way and to the point almost to where it didn't, wouldn't even even happened potentially, you know, some of, some of those, there were other armed men that night who weren't picked on because they were perceived to be more mature and more intimidating. And he just looked like a kid with a gun uh, which he essentially was. That's a, I mean, he'd trained with it a little bit, like an hour or two, maybe more. Um, but if indeed he'd been shooting an AR-15, you know, he drops he drops out of school when he turns 14, and become or does homeschool or whatever, uh, buys an AR-15, uh, or preferably a better we- a, be- a better weapon, <laughs> uh, and trained with it. You know, a he would have been more effective, but b he would have been more int- intimidating if he'd even chosen to go. Uh, so I don't see how that's a bad thing. Right. Um, the anecdotes here kind of wash each other out. Uh, and, you know, are they are they old enough to make decisions like that? And I think the answer is probably yes. Um, again, outliers, there are people who when they're 18 are not mature enough to to own a gun and they're still not mature enough when they're 28. Um, but then again, there's people who are when they're 14, 15, 16. Not everybody. Uh, I tend to think that the age when the you can look at it, age cohorts, you know, everyone of a certain age, what percentage of them can make decisions. So if you look at 10-year-olds, it's zero. You know, nobody who's 10, uh, you know, unless someone has supernatural abilities or whatever, is going to be able to make decisions like that. And nobody when they're 11. When you get to 12, uh, there may be outlier cases, you know. Uh, people are going to hate me for that maybe, but, like, it's just the case that some people start earlier and they're they're – uh, what, what's the term early bloomers and there's going to be some maybe that that's the case 13 you start to get a lot more uh, I wouldn't say it's 50 50 at that point but a lot more but then when you start getting 14 yeah and I'm talking like the ability to kiss the ability to sign a contract the ability to decide whether or not they want to go to school um, and that's another side issue here uh, 
forcing tens of millions of teenagers to go to school when most of them don't want to for whatever reason is just a complete waste of resources. They don't need to be babysat. Uh, they're not going to use the stuff that they're tr trying to be taught. Um, even if they did remember the stuff that they were taught, um, its usefulness in their lives is negligible. You know, they're not going to use algebra. The vast majority of them are never going to use algebra or trigonometry or geometry or social studies, whatever that means th these days. Uh, they're not going to use music. Uh, the only thing that they might use would be like athletics gym, and those are being cut right and left, right? Um, and so you, you're forcing them to go, uh, and that's going to cause a lot of angst. Now, not all of that angst is going to manifest in a homicidal rampage. Uh, I'll, you know, they're just going to disconnect. They're going to go into drugs. They're going to uh, just become apathetic. And why, why not? Also, e e e not only is the information not useful, uh, they don't learn it anyway. You know, two weeks after the test, it's all gone. Even the kids who are good students who remember every, like, pass the test, forget it all in a couple weeks. Uh, so, and the thing is, I don't know how many of them would articulate that, but at some level, most quote unquote kids in high school know that. Uh, and especially when they get towards the end, they get major senioritis because they know I'm going to be done and none of this is going to matter. And again, most of them aren't going to become homicidal because of that, but forcing them to go, putting millions of people in a situation where they don't need to be uh, and where they'd rather not be is not good for them and it's not good for anyone else, not to mention a huge waste of taxpayer money. So if they were just free, if they were given the right to say, look, and this is the thing, I'm not, I don't see the gun rights thing as is a separate, separable uh, uh, right from everything else. It's the same as the right to, uh, you know, uh, to consent to sex. It's the right to date. It's the right to sign a contract. It's the right to take a loan. It's the right to incorporate. It's the right, right to get married. Uh, like there's just this whole panoply of rights. There's a spectrum that's from a single source. Do they have autonomy or not? And when they're little kids, they don't. And we don't treat them that way. They still have some rights. There's a fiduciary responsibility on those who are in charge of them, namely their parents, but if not, somebody else, whoever the surrogate of their parents are. And once those, once that autonomy manifests, once they're physically and mentally capable to take care of themselves, then they have the right to assert that, and that includes the whole panoply. And that means you can't force them to go to school. That means you can't stop them from getting a job that they want or working the hours that they want or getting paid the wage that they want. And it means you can't stop them from buying a gun. And there's not really strong evidence that that would be bad if you allowed that, right? You can find, oh, anecdote here. Yeah, we have tens of millions of kids, a huge country. You know, the, the demographics are complex and manifold. And you got to do way better than an anecdote, right? Kyle Rittenhouse cancels out whoever this Uvalde guy was, right? If that's If that's the level of the debate, then that's the level of the response. But no, the burden of proof the burden of proof falls on you if you want to prevent people, uh, not on them. They don't have to prove that they need it. 99% of the stuff that you own is stuff that if you did not have, you would not die. Right? You need you need a certain number of calories and a certain amount of protection from the elements, which is quite minimal, um, and a certain amount of water, and other than that, everything else is stuff that you don't need. Right. And, you know, the socialists of the world look at that to the extent that they say that you are entitled to your needs and they disagree with that. Look, you ask 10 socialists what what your needs are. You get 10 different answers. And even when they give overly simplistic, well, you need health care. What does that mean? Does that mean plastic surgery? Does that mean circumcision? Does that mean uh, you get to go to the gym whenever you want? Does that mean you get sauna? Does that mean you get a vaccine or not? Right. Plastic surgery, trans surgery, right. Transition surgery. What does that even mean, right? They don't know. Like, like even, but even when you just oversimplify it, they don't give the same answer. And you've got, you know, oh, you need Wi-Fi, you blah blah blah. So, uh, you need you need maternity leave. You need uh, uh, free free college. Uh, you know, you need parks. Park. You know, a lot, a lot of them believe in parks. So, um, no. Uh, what you decide what you need burden of proof is on other people to stop you and teenagers are 
just young adults, you know, it's at some point they reach full autonomy, full enough for regular everyday things. I could see insurance companies charging them more. I could see, uh, you know, if you if you have a car company saying, look, you are younger, you're a little higher risk, so we're either not going to insure you, or we will, but at a much higher rate. That that likely will work out in the market, and that's fine. You could see businesses saying, we'll hire you, but we're going to hire you for less, or maybe we'll do an unpaid internship because you're new. They do that anyway. We're just going to push back when it happens. Um, and yeah, there might be dealerships like we're not going to sell you a gun just because you're a little too young. Uh, maybe we think there's too much of a liability. But if they really want one, they're going to get one, and uh, it's not necessarily a problem, right? The vast majority of teenagers who handle weapons, uh, including the ones in the Army, well, except for the ones who commit war crimes in the Army, <laughs> Well, that that agenda, but I guess we don't want to go there. Um, uh, are fine. They don't hurt anyone. They use them responsibly. You know, teenagers have just as good aim as everybody else, uh, and they have good enough judgment to know not to just go and kill people for no reason. Uh, and the the ones who are crazy enough to do that, they're still going to be crazy when they're not eighteen. Uh, these guys, Adam Lanza was not going to turn eighteen and become you know cool and good. He wasn't. Uh, he was never going to have. And what, so we should deny, if he was 25, 35, we should deny the rights to everyone else because of him? No, it doesn't make any sense. So, no, teenagers should be allowed to have guns. They shouldn't be forced to go to school. Uh, they should be able to sign contracts, and they should be able to uh, to consent to sex, too, for a large part. And, you know, I, I think ideally, ideally, maybe this is unworkable. It's based on each individual. And once you show a, a certain level of uh, ability, uh, and this can be tested for, there's there's uh, psychiatrists out there who ha- and psychologists who have metrics for this um, to show that they have enough reasoning skills, enough cognitive ability. Uh, if that's not workable, then we just have to lower the age. Um, and you know, if I if I had to pick a number uh, that was going to uh, quote unquote liberate uh, a, a as many people without having putting a whole bunch in a position where they're just not ready, it would probably be 14. Um, uh, if you read um, Teen 2.0, which you can see on the back there, right above my head, Teen 2.0, right there, um, uh, then, you know, I mean, he argues like 13. So, uh, but I think, I mean, and look, 14 is the age of consent in like, France and Brazil and a lot of a lot of Latin country, a lot of Catholic countries. So, um, and that's when I mean, when do when did Jews get bar mitzvah? Twelve, thirteen. That's when you quote unquote become a man. Uh, well, maybe there's more truth to that than they generally recognize. So, yeah, they should be able to own guns. Look at Joseph Coney has proven that soldier ch- child soldiers so soldiers can be effective, uh, as has the U.S. Marines and Army. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it takes it takes more than one scary anecdote to condemn um, an entire age cohort to second class citizens. That's what we're talking about. This was, this is why when, when when we're talking about teen liberation, it's not a small thing, right? You're not just being a nice guy or protective when you say, "I think that you should have no rights really until you're 18." Because you're then restricting the liberty of millions and millions of people, uh, and for the most part, unnecessarily. Yes, there are people who are teenagers who don't have autonomy. There's 20 and 30 year olds who also don't have autonomy. Uh, most of them are capable of that, and it would do them good, and it would do us good, it would do the world good if they were free to exercise that autonomy for the benefit of themselves and for the rest of the community. And to the extent that they want to own and use guns, then that's also to the to the betterment of our society and to them. So yeah, I think that 18-year-olds should be allowed to have semi-automatic weapons. I think that they should. I think that 17-year-olds like Kyle Rittenhouse should be allowed to have uh, uh, semi-automatic weapons, whether they be handguns or rifles. It's funny that they temp- t- typically have easier legal access to the long guns than the, the handguns, uh, which I can kind of understand. Uh, I don't agree with, but I can kind of understand given the the statistics, right? Much of the debate is driven by these long guns, but much of the actual uh, homicide is driven by the handguns. But I would go down 16, 15, 14, and then 13-year-olds, they can can borrow their older brothers 
uh, and wait until they're a little bit older. But uh, that's that's basically what I think. Uh, so let me know what you guys think, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.